ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةً ضَلَالَةً And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters, in Islam here we are. Just days away from the blessed month of Ramadan. The month in which Ibn Jawzi, he said, if the inhabitants of the qubur, of the graves, could ask for one day in this dunya, they would ask for it to be a day in Ramadan. And if Allah allows us to reach it, then we will be able to fast and worship Allah with prayers, night prayers, with charity and the likes of these matters. So let us remind ourselves of some of these things to motivate us in case we get to reach that month in a few days here. Allah, He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah says what means fasting, O you who believe. A call to those who want to be believers with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just your ordinary acts of worshippers. O oh, you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you like it was prescribed, prescribed on those before you so that you may achieve taqwa. This taqwa, to see, shield yourself from Allah's punishment. You act in a way of obedience and you stay away from disobedience to put between yourself and Allah's punishment a barrier. This cautiousness in how you live, this is taqwa. And when we're fasting, we're more likely to be in that state. And this is what you want to be in throughout the year. This is the purpose of your siyam. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَسَّوْمُ جُنَّةِ يَعْنِ مِنَ النَّارِ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said that fasting, it is a shield. It's a shield for you like a person in battle has a shield to protect himself from the stabbing of a sword. The shield of the siyam, it is a shield from the hellfire. To stay away from food and drink and intimacy with your spouse from fajr time, uh, the dawn, يعني, <clears throat> until the sun sets. But know, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that above this is not just that Allah wants you to fast, but you don't establish your prayers. And we can't mention Ramadan and the fasting and all this without telling and reminding one another to safeguard the prayers. Allah. حافظوا على الصلوات والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين. الله عز وجل he says what means safeguard the prayers, especially the middle prayer, the عصر prayer, and stand in front of Allah with obedience. So know that the prayer is the first of the actions that should be safeguarded. And you fasting without praying has no avail and no purpose and no reward. The prayers have to be established. This fasting, this siyam, 
This is where you show your sincerity to Allah. Because Allah is the one who will truly know if you've left off those things for Him. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الْقُدْسِي يَتْرُكُ طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ وَشَهْوَتَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِ الصِّيَامُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا رواه البخاري In this hadith Qudsi, the Prophet ﷺ, he narrates that Allah said, <coughs> He leaves his food, meaning his servant, male or female, they leave their food, their drink, their desires because of me. Fasting is for me. And I won't just multiply it by 10 to 700. I'll multiply it with as much as I want to. Because it is truly for me. And every good deed shall be rewarded tenfold. By Allah's rahmah, by His permission, this fasting gets you your previous minor sins forgiven. The major ones needing you to repent, meaning needing you to make tawbah. But the minor sins, كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانٍ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ <coughs> The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said in the authentic hadith, in Bukhari Muslim, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, out of sincere faith, wanting to get closer to the Lord, wanting to earn His pleasure and His forgiveness and His mercy, and hoping for that reward, he shall have all of his previous minor sins forgiven for him. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is not the time to argue about when and why do we, when do we begin the fast and the likes of these matters. Just a brief reminder that the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, سُومُ لِرُؤْيَتِهِ وَأَسْقُرُ لِرُؤْيَتِهِ He said, fast when it has been cited, when the hilal has been cited, and break your fast when it has been cited. And this will be the sunnah of our Messenger وسلم, and the sunnah that we remain upon until the end of time, the Ibn Allahi Ta'ala. So it will be announced once a hilal is seen anywhere by any Muslim who bears witness that they saw it. And so you will stay tuned for those messages. Ramadan has these virtues. Virtues that are so great that we should take advantage of them if we are allowed to live in that time. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانِ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ وَأُغْلِقَتْ أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمْ وَسُلْسِلَتِ الشَّيَاطِينِ وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ يَا بَاغِي الْخَيْرِ هَلُمَّ وَيَا بَاغِي الْشَرِّ وَيَا بَاغِي الشَّرِّ أَقْسِرْ وَلِلَّهِ وَتَقَائِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ حَتَّى يَنْقَدِ رَمَضَانِ رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن the Prophet ﷺ, he said, when Ramadan starts, the doors of paradise, the doors of Jannah are open. The doors of the hellfire are closed. The devils are chained up and shackled. This does not mean you won't hear a whisper, you won't sing. It just means that they're weakened. The devils are weakened. They're not as strong in terms of their attack towards you. And a caller calls out, Oh, you who crave good, who want to do good, who want to be good, for the sake of their Lord, come and find good. And oh you who, co- who crave evil, abstain, stay away from it. Do not disobey Allah or His Messenger wasallam. And Allah has certain people that He frees from the hellfire every night until Ramadan ends. Every night Allah is freeing people from the hellfire. Every night Allah is giving people the glad tidings of being saved from that hellfire. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصيام والقرآن يشعان للعبد يوم القيامة يقول الصيام أي ربي منعته الطعام والشهوات بالنهار فشفعني فيه ويقول القرآن منعته النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه قال فيشفعان This hadith of Sheikh Al-Bani he graded as authentic in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed <coughs> The Prophet ﷺ said, fasting in the Qur'an will come on the day of resurrection as intercessors. Fasting, something that is abstract, we can't touch. The Qur'an, although we can touch it, it doesn't speak to us, yani, physically. But Allah will give them voice on the day of resurrection. Fasting will speak on your behalf, saying, Oh Allah, I prevented him food and drink and desires during the day. So let me intercede for him. Let me ask, or her, let me ask for you to save them from the hellfire and admit them into paradise. And 
the uh, Quran will do the same thing. Oh Allah, I prevented him or her from sleeping in the depths of the night. So let me intercede. Let me beg of you to grant them Jannah and save them from the hellfire. So Allah will give them permission. Don't think any good deed you do is going to go unrewarded. And look at this on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Imagine having the Prophet ﷺ, the Qur'an, and fasting, pleading to Allah on your behalf to admit you into Jannah without any punishment of the hellfire. In Ramadan, we have Qiyam Al-Layl. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانٍ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Another hadith that gives us glad tidings of having our minor sins forgiven if we do them. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever stands up in Qiyam, in Taraweeh prayers, in Ramadan, again, with complete faith and hoping for reward from Allah only, they're not doing it so people can praise them or talk good about them, but for Allah to see their fervent desire to get closer to Him. Whoever does so, he will have or she will have their previous minor sins forgiven. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Ramadan is not the time to be lazy. It's not the time to sleep. It's not the time for you to look for excuses. It's not the time for you to focus on food or to make every other thought drag you away from the masjid, drag you away from standing in prayer like the Prophet used to do till his feet would swell. This is the time for you to sacrifice. How much do you really want Allah to be pleased with you? Do you really love Allah and His Messenger وسلم, more than anyone and anything else? ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الرجل إذا قام مع الإمام حتى ينصرف كتب الله له قيام ليلة إن أثنتك حديث that we find that Shaykh al he authenticated it. The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, if a man or a woman stands in salah behind the imam in the masjid until he finishes, meaning you finish with his finishing, you pray and you don't leave till he is done and prays and he leaves. Yani you stay with him through the witr, then Allah will write for you as if you stood the whole night in prayer. So even though you will have only stood in the masjid an hour from Isha until Qiyam is over, then Allah will write it for you as if you prayed all the way until Fajr. This is the virtues, the rewards that Allah is giving to us, helping us to يعني, earn His mercy. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, regarding the Siyam, the intention needs to be there and the intention is in the heart. There is no authentic dua for you to say as an intention, as a niyyah, for fasting, for wudu, for salah. مكان النية في القلب the place for the intention is in the heart. It is not to be uttered by the lips. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ لَمْ يُبَيِّتْ الصِّيَامِ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ رَوَاهُ إِبْنِ حَبَّانِ And this hadith is marfu' and acceptable. The Prophet ﷺ said, No fasting is accepted from a person who does not commit his intention to fast before dawn, before the fajr time. Now the ulama say, if you have one niyyah to fast the whole month, before the month of Ramadan starts, then this is sufficient, as long as it's before Fajr time. But others of the ulama said that every morning he should have or she should have that niyyah in their heart to fast that day. Now this niyyah, some people will say, well, I didn't wake up for suhoor, so then I don't have my niyyah, I, and they'll break their fast, and this is incorrect, this is an error. The niyyah, it's placed in the heart. If you set your alarm clock, if you're intending mind and body and soul to fast that next day, this is your niyyah. So do not innovate into the deen what is not to be brought into it, what is not legislated already by it. But the niyyah must be present in the heart for you to fast for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the eating and drinking, قال الله عز وجل وكلوا واشربوا حتى يتبين حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل. Allah says what means in Surah Al-Baqarah and eat and drink until the white thread of Fajr appears distinct from the black thread. And this isn't physical threads that you will hold up. This means that you begin to see the light on the eastern horizon. At this time, this is when the fasting begins. So how people stop the fasting 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes before the fajr, this is an error. 
This is not from the Sunnah of the Prophet or his companions who used to delay the suhoor. They used to delay it until the time of Fajr. Even if the cup was in their hand and they were drinking and the adhan went off, the Prophet told Umar anhu, finish it. So make the deen easy, make it what it was and do not make it hard upon yourself or the people. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَصَحَّرُ فَإِلَّا فِي السُّهُورِ بَرَكَةً The Prophet ﷺ, he said, wake up for suhoor. Even if you think you don't need it or you don't want it, wake up for it, even a sip of water, a date, a bite of a date, a nibble. Wake up for the suhoor because in it is a barakah, in it is a blessing. Again, if you don't do so, your fast is still, your suhiyan is still okay, still good. And you do not break your fast if you don't wake up for suhoor. So it is not an obligation, rather it has blessings in it, so you should do it. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهِلِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ فَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the authentic hadith and we mentioned this last week when we warned each other about the tongue and its dangers. The Prophet وسلم, he said, whoever does not abstain from foul language, from obscenities, from ignorance or absurd acts, then Allah does not care for him abstaining from food and drink. Fasting is not just the food and the drink. If you stay away from food and drink and your desires, but you're cursing at everybody, you're getting angry, you're raising your voice left and right, you're speaking absurd words or obscene words, then Allah has no need for you to stay away from food and drink. The fasting is of your whole body, especially your tongue. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this blessed month of Ramadan that is upon us has many rulings with respect to the fasting. On your way out, there is a sheet of does it break the fast or not? Because many years, there are many errors that I get texted with people breaking the fast when they should not have broken their fast. So learn these things. They're printed out in detail. You can get an injection as long as it's not nutritious. If you needed some, يعني, the flu vaccine, it does not break your fast. If you have to get a dental procedure, it does not break your fast. Know your deen. For the women, for the sisters, every year there's a question. If they get their menses, some are of the belief, if they get it before Dhuhr time, then they break their fast. But if they get it after Dhuhr time, then they continue to fast till the evening. And this is incorrect. For the sisters, if they get their menstrual cycle, if they get their bleeding for their monthly period, even five minutes before method, then they have to make up that day. But Allah will reward them for what they have put forth into that day already. Brothers, if you can move forward, barakallahu feekum. That way those who are coming in have a place to pray their two rakahs before they sit. While you're doing that, I'm going to mention, last week a brother came up to me and mentioned to me, he literally saw somebody, two people, on their phone during the khutbah. You ain't hurting my feelings. You can, you can all be on the phone if you want to be. You're not hurting me. I don't care. I'm not up here for anything other than to deliver the message of Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you're on your phone, you're thrown out of your jama'ah. You might as well not be here. Some were looking up deals, business deals. How evil is that? When jama'ah, the whole purpose of it was for you to leave business. To leave your business. And forget even what you quote-unquote think you need for survival in this life. So you can focus on your deen. The hadith are very clear. They're not my words, they're the words of the best of mankind. The one who we bear witness is the final seal and messenger of Allah Azza wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala, ila masa al-hasa, faqad laka. If a person even plays with a stone, plays with the carpet in front of them back then, they didn't have the carpets, there were stones and pebbles. They weren't in the comfort and the luxury we're in now. But whoever does anything of that, whoever says, li akhihi unsub, tells his brother to be quiet, he has committed idle talk, and whoever commits idle talk, فَلَا جُمْعَةُ له. He has no Jum'ah. No reward for that Jum'ah. If you cannot 
divorce yourself from your phone during this time? Is that tempting? Leave it in your car. If you cannot do that, you need to take a look in the mirror and really evaluate your life. Because that's a shaitan. That's a devil. And although we can get khair from it, we can read the Qur'an and we can, uh, the adhan may, may remind us it's prayer time and all this other stuff. The amount of evil that we're seeing come out of it ain't worth it. Leave your phones outside of this building if you cannot control it just staying in your pocket while you're in it. Because someone's searching for something to buy, someone's searching for you know, uh, something to sell, or just looking for me. It's not me. It has no effect on me. You do not hurt the imam's feelings when you're doing that. You're hurting yourself. So be mindful. This goes for the sisters too. Anybody who attends Jum'ah, wanting the reward of Jum'ah, they have to follow that. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Ramadan has come upon you a month of blessings in which Allah will cover you, send down mercy, remove sins and answer your du'a. ثم قال ينظر الله إلى تنافسكم فيه فيباهي بكم ملائكته فأروا 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 الله من أنفسكم خيرا فإن الشقية من حرم فيه رحمة الله. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith which is authentic in the collection of Tabarani. He said that Ramadan again has come to you a month of blessings where Allah will cover you, send down His mercy, remove sins, and answer prayers. Then he said Allah sees in this month your competition. You're struggling, you're striving to do good deeds. And he boasts to his angels about you. Show Allah what is better than this by yourselves. Verily the wretched are those debarred from Allah's mercy. This is the month Allah has led us to. The month that Allah has brought us to. What will we do? What are we planning to do? Just like you plan for a vacation for months in advance. And you make phone calls and you make lists. What have you done? to prepare for this blessed month if we're alive to see it in a few days. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to mention two things briefly for us to reflect upon. Two matters that rip up our deen, rip up our families and our communities. And they are ones that can spoil the whole month and its, ver- and its benefit for you if you engage in them or if you do not solve them ahead of time. عن جابر قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن إبليس يدعى عرشه على الماء ثم يبعث سراياه فأدناهم منه منزلة أعظمهم فتنة يجيء أحدهم فيقول فعدت كذا وكذا فيقول ما صنعت شيئا قال ثم يجيء ثم يجيء أحدهم فيقول ما تركته حتى فرقت بينه وبين امرأته امرأته قال فيدنيه منه ويقول نعم انت this hadith which is sahih in the sahih of Imam Muslim the prophet saw some he said verily iblis shaitan the devil satan he places his throne over water and then he sends out his troops his helper devils and he dispatches them to go out to the people the nearest of them at, uh, are the greatest at causing tribulations. The nearest to Iblis, to Shaitan, to Satan, is the one who causes the most mischief in the land. So he will come back at the end of the day and say, I caused this person to do such and such a sin, and this one to do such and such a sin. Say, Ma the shay'a. You have done nothing until one of his helper devils comes back and says, I caused a husband and a wife to have discord between them. And he'll say, Ni'ma anta. You're the one who's done the best today. In another narration it says, And he will embrace him, like give him a hug. So thrilled at the discord and the harm that he planted between a husband and a wife. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a big source of this disagreement and being upset and argumentation between the husband and the wife, it can happen in Ramadan. And even though the devils are chained up, it means they're weakened. It doesn't mean that they don't exist. So I mind you, 
I remind you that Ramadan isn't just about the food and your meals. Yes, this is an ibadah for a wife to cook for her family or for the man to cook for his family. This is ibadah, this is worship for them to have food when they break their fast. But subhanallah, getting mad because you have to have some leftovers the next day. Getting mad because something is cold or not ready or what's for zuhur or what's for iftar. And this being the topic of discussions day in and day out in your home, you're ruining the time, the chances, the opportunities you have to please Allah and to earn His pleasure and to earn reward from Him. It is not about the food. This month is not about the food. It's about how you're going to spend your time in ibadah, in worship, getting closer to Allah. Other than the mistreatment of the spouses and the children, or the stepchildren, or in that mistreatment of them, we see verbal, emotional, physical abuses that happen, and this can again ruin your fasting. Allah is not in need of your food and drink if this is going to be what you tread upon. And also, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and advice in these last three or four days before Ramadan begins. Squash out any beef. Squash any arguments you have. Put to rest any disputes you have with any of your brothers or sisters in Islam. Make up. Do not hold grudges with one another. Do not hold hatred for one another. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرَّاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَالْتَابِمِينَ الْغَيْرُ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says what means. Those who give in charity, in prosperity, and in adversity. And those who repress their anger, and they pardon mankind. They pardon many. Allah, He loves the muhsineen. These are the muhsineen. These are the good doers. Forgiving, restraining anger, pardoning people, putting, it, putting things they may have done to harm you past but leaving it in the past, moving forward, forgiving the people. This is the way of the Muslim. Allah says, <clears throat> إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal, He says that the believers are brothers. They're in a brotherhood, a sisterhood. So make amends between the brothers and the sisters who are arguing. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ and fear Allah لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحِمُونَ So that Allah may grant you His mercy. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if you have a brother or a sister, a mother or a father, a brother or sister in Islam, not just of blood relations, make up with them if you're not speaking. Give them a call. If it's too hard, send them a text. Put your grudges behind you. Do not hold these things. Do not delay your entry into paradise because you don't want to forgive someone in this world or you don't want to make up with somebody in this dunya. Because even if you cross the bridge, the salat over the hellfire, you will not enter Jannah until you've made up with those who are your brothers and sisters in Islam, who you have an argument with, or you have some enmity towards. Get all those things out of your heart. Enter Ramadan with a clean heart. So here we come, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Here we go. Fasting, prayers, night prayers, charity, all of it coming. Allah says, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافِسُونَ And in this, that those strive and compete who want to strive and compete. The race would be on if Allah allows us to see those days. The chance to enter Jannah through its many gates. Bab al-Rayyan, the door for those who are fasting. Bab al-Walidayn, the door of the people who are good to their parents. Bab al-Sadaqah, the door for those who are giving in charity. And the likes of those doors to enter Jannah from all of those gates. These days coming up, they're better than your wedding day. They're better than the day your children were born. They're better than your birthday. They're better than any other day. These days of Ramadan that are coming up except for those first 10 days of the Hijjah as related in the authentic hadith. So make this Ramadan count if we're allowed to see it. We ask Allah to make us from those who are allowed to reach Ramadan, worship Him wholly and wholeheartedly, following the Qur'an and the Sunnah, reciting His words, not to say how far we got in the Qur'an, but to ask how far into our hearts did the Qur'an get. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم الاموات انك انت السميع القريب تجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على اعدائك واعداء الدين 
يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين